Hi everyone, this is English Hub where you can have your daily dose of English language. We are starting off with the parts of speech as a great number of students struggle with basic grammatical concepts. Today, we are going to talk about noun, which is an important part of speech. We'll have a look at its definition, examples, and kinds. So, coming to the definition, as you may know already, a noun is a naming word. It primarily names a person, place, animal, thing, or an idea. Let's have a look at these examples. The nouns have been highlighted and underlined. The first one is, Ali is playing football. In this particular example, there are two nouns, Ali and football. Ali is the name of a person, and football is the name of a thing. Now, moving on to the next example. Aisha is reading a book. In this example again, two nouns can be identified. Aisha, name of a person, and book, name of a thing. Let me read out the next one. The dog is running in the house. Again, two nouns can be spotted. Dog, which is an animal, and house, which refers to a place. The next sentence is, Alia had a beautiful dream. In this sentence, there are two nouns. Alia, a person, and dream which refers to an idea. The next example we have is, Ahmed loves to help his friends. In this example too, there are two nouns, Ahmed, a person, and his friends, who also refer to persons. Okay, so till now we have talked about the definition and examples of noun. Now, let's talk about the kinds of noun. I'm going to explain each one of these a little bit. The first one we are going to discuss is a common noun. It is the name of a common or general person, place, animal, thing or an idea. Let's have a look at the examples. The first one is a girl, which is a common noun, as it refers to any girl and not a particular one. Next is city, which may refer to any city. The next one is sheep. The animal is specified here, but it refers to any sheep, not a specific one. Toy, again, refers to any toy and freedom too. Is a common noun referring to general freedom. Now we are going to talk about proper noun. It refers to the name of a specific person, place, animal, thing or an idea. One thing to keep in mind is that we always capitalize the first letter of a proper noun. Let's have a look at the examples. The first one is Aisha which refers to the name of a particular girl. The next is Lahore, the name of a specific city. Next, you can see the picture of a sheep. Its name is Billy. Here, the sheep is specified. The next example names the toy as Teddy to make it a proper noun. And then we have Choo Choo's freedom, referring to a particular freedom, that is, of Choo Choo. The next kind we are going to discuss is a collective noun. This is an interesting one as many collective nouns are quite amazing such as a school of fish, an embarrassment of pandas, etc. A group or collection of people, animals or things is referred to as a collective noun. Here the examples used are a team of players in which team is a collective noun, a school of fish where school is a collective noun, and a bunch of keys, in which bunch refers to the collective noun. Next, let's talk about concrete or material noun. A concrete or material noun is the one that exists physically and is real. We can sense it through any of the five senses, namely sight, hearing, smell, taste, or touch. Examples include tea, flower, and cheer. You can see that all these things exist physically and can be perceived through five senses. As opposed to concrete noun is the abstract noun, which does not exist physically. It can't be perceived through any of the five senses. It can be some feeling, quality, or an idea. Examples include happiness, anger, friendship, knowledge, and beauty. You can very well notice here that none of these examples exist physically and hence can't be perceived through five senses. Now, coming to the compound noun. It is a combination of two nouns that makes a new noun. You can understand better with the help of these examples. 
Two nouns, cup and cake, combine together to make a new noun, cupcake. Similarly, tooth and brush combine together to make a new noun, toothbrush. In the same way, hand plus bag makes a new noun, handbag. The next one is a countable noun. As it is quite evident from the name, it is the noun that can be counted. A simple way to differentiate it from uncountable noun is that the articles are an and the quantifiers are few and many can only be used with countable nouns and not the uncountable ones. Examples include fences, rabbit, apples. You can see all these examples are countable. The next kind of noun we are going to discuss is uncountable noun. As the name suggests, it is a noun that can't be counted. The quantifiers are little and much can only be used with uncountable nouns and not the countable ones. The examples are milk, sugar and happiness. You can see milk, sugar and happiness. All these cannot be counted. The next two kinds we are going to talk about are based on number. They are singular and plural nouns. As the name hints, a singular noun refers to a single or only one person, place, animal, thing or an idea. Examples are a book, a fox and a butterfly. The articles are and can be used with singular nouns only and not the plural ones. Now coming to the plural noun. It denotes more than one person's, places, animals, things or ideas. We usually add S, E, S or I, E, S at the end of a singular to change it into a plural. There are some rules for changing singulars to plurals but we can discuss them here due to time constraints. We will definitely discuss them in a separate lecture. Look at the given examples. The book is changed to books by adding S at the end. The fox is changed to foxes by adding ES and the butterfly is changed to butterflies by adding IES. The next kind we are going to talk about is the possessive noun. It shows possession or ownership. In simple words, it tells that something belongs to someone. Usually, apostrophe S is used at the end, but other cases may use apostrophe only. Examples are Aisha's books. Apostrophe S is used to show possession that the books belong to Aisha. Same is the case with Dishan's dog. This example shows that dog belongs to Dishan. Based on gender, noun has two main kinds, masculine and feminine. But we are going to talk about gender neutral noun also to give you an idea about it. A masculine noun refers to a male. Examples include man, king, boy and rooster. A feminine noun refers to a female, for example, woman, queen, girl, and hen. A gender neutral noun is used to refer to either a male or a female. The examples are person, child, teacher, and doctor. These do not specify any particular gender. And that's a wrap. Hope you liked it. If yes, do like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Your questions and suggestions are welcome in the comment section. Thank you. Have a nice day.